Hi, my name's Rachel Andrews. Welcome to Everyday Athlete. On this week's video, I thought I'd take a look at something that I see, keep seeing cropping up all the time at the moment on Facebook pages, and that is what to wear for winter swimming. I keep seeing people asking about how to buy a wetsuit, recommendations for wetsuits and all the rest of it. But my big question is, do you actually need a wetsuit? What kind of swimming are you doing? There's all sorts of types of swimming that you might be doing. You could be dipping, so just getting in for a short period, taking in the atmosphere and uh, chatting with friends in the water. You might be just doing a bit of a social swim and going not very far, just, just long enough to get your fix. It could be that you're doing a swoosh, a quick, a quick fast um, whiz down a river or a little bit of coastline. Um, you might be competing and that's certainly where you may need to wear a wetsuit. Um, or you could be doing some kind of training, whether it be triathlon training or that you're wanting to keep fitness up and you're wanting to put in a lot of time in the water. Those are the sorts of questions to ask yourself before you decide that you definitely need a wetsuit. As the temperature drops, we certainly need to look after our core body temperature and we need to be mindful of how cold we're getting ourselves. So the length of time you're thinking of spending in the water is also a factor in what you want to wear. Now wetsuits work by getting you wet. So uh, as the name might suggest, what happens is the water absorbs through the neoprene and then is held there next to your skin. And as, your, uh, as you radiate heat, it warms up that thin layer of water all around you and keeps you in a kind of little bit of insulated water. So it keeps you nice and warm. What they don't do is they don't work if they're too big. So if they're too big and it just flushes every time you move your arms, you get water running through you, then that will certainly be hardly worth the bother. It might keep a bit of wind off, but it's not going to keep you warm. And if they're too tight, they're really uncomfortable and it makes it, it, makes it difficult to breathe. The thing I like about swimming in a wetsuit is that they give you great buoyancy. You're warm from the off, which then means that you can stay in longer. So for things like training or an exploration swim, that is my number one choice of something to wear. There are a couple of disadvantages to wearing a wetsuit for swimming. And one of them I also mentioned as being an advantage and that is the buoyancy. So they can make you slightly too buoyant in that they lift your legs and it can make it uncomfortable to do things like breaststroke. So if you are a breaststroke swimmer and you're wanting a wetsuit, make sure you check out the wetsuit you're getting to ensure that it has, um, that, that it's been made to be swum in breaststroke. There are a couple of makes that do that. The other thing is they're pretty expensive and they are quite difficult to get one to fit absolutely correctly. It needs to fit like a glove, but like no other glove that you've worn in your life before. It needs to fit really snugly. On land, they just don't feel very comfortable on. So my top advice for that would be to go and try one out at a try shop. Get someone who actually knows what they're looking at to help you out and to talk you through um, in, which is the right fit. This was, I think I tried on three or four different ones and oh my God, that was a sweaty experience. <laughs> Less said about that, the better. Um, but the person who was there patiently helping me to fit them, talked me through it and this certainly had the best fit for me and it has served me well over three years. But it's not the be all and end all and it's not the thing I wear the most when I'm swimming in the winter. Let me talk you through that. So here is my slightly flimsier collection of things that I wear to swim in the winter. I always wear booties. Uh, these ones are Seaskins Legend booties, five millimeters, um, and they protect the bottom of my feet and they keep me really warm because they're also made of neoprene. Next, standard swimming costume. Next thing is my gloves. Uh, these are Lomo Tri-X gloves and uh, there's a review on those. They are brilliant. Um, then I wear a neoprene um, cap underneath a bright one. It's really important to still be seen when we're swimming. So these items might not well up, add up to the heat of a wetsuit, but they certainly allow me, by having my hands and feet covered, I reckon that I can stay in there at least twice longer than I would be able to if I was just in there with bare hands and bare feet. It makes a huge difference for me. There is a group of extremely hardy individuals who are polar bears. Those guys swim through the winter in just their swimmers. No gloves, no footwear, 
and just a latex hat. I absolutely take my hat off to these people. Uh, I'm not one of their number. I like my little comforts of having my hands and feet nice and warm so that I can enjoy my surroundings. But whatever floats your boat, there is something out there for everybody in outdoor swimming. So in conclusion, I would say really have a good think about whether or not you actually need a wetsuit to go swimming in and perhaps consider swimming without one as it gets colder and just see how you get on. It might be that you surprise yourself. If you get yourself some gloves and booties, which is a much cheaper option and easier to fit than getting a wetsuit and of course a neoprene cap, you might find that's enough. Um, certainly for the swimming that you're doing. Don't rush into thinking that you've got to get one to feel the part, look the part, be the part. Saying that, some places do insist that you have a wetsuit, but swimming at the beach or in rivers in general, that's not the case. It's always a good idea to check out the second-hand market as well, because if you have decided, yes, it's exploration swims, it's training swims, I really, really want a wetsuit. Once you know which one you're after, check out things like the Outdoor Swimming Society's Marketplace on Facebook, because you'll find that people have bought them for an event and literally never used them since. They may even have only used it for that event or not at all. There's lots of bargains to be had. You don't need to dash out and buy a really expensive one. And if you've got a special birthday or something coming up and you're desperate to drop a hundred quid or more on something, I would suggest you look at a changing robe before you look at a wetsuit. I hope you've enjoyed this week's video and it's given you some food for thought and uh, got, the, got the cogs turning a little bit as to what equipment you really need to go swimming. If you did enjoy it, please consider subscribing to my channel. I've got lots and lots of videos about outdoor swimming, lots of stuff to do about safety, equipment, little trips I've done. Anyway, it'd be great to have you along. Come join the fun and I'll see you next week. Bye.